Do you need a business doctor? Basically somebody that can come in and diagnose the financial health of your business and help you with cash flow. Pretty sure that we could all use that, especially those folks who have been in business for a while and don't really have a good grasp on their finances and want to figure out how to grow their financial wealth with their business. I definitely think that this episode is gonna be helpful for you. My goal and my mission in life is to help as many business owners as I can to become profitable and to own a cash flowing machine, not some type of job that they're enslaved to. We're gonna be diving into some kind of technical aspects of financial management for our business. And this is something that is important to at least have on your radar. So my guest today is basically a business doctor and somebody who works with small businesses to help them diagnose the problems and improve their cash flow. So if that is you, I encourage you to stick around and let's get into it. Hey, hey, and welcome to the Speak Organize podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Summers, professional organizer, ADHD organizing specialist, and your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. Do me a favor if you haven't done this already because I don't want you to miss a single future episode, take out your device and go ahead and tap that subscribe button so that you become a member of the speaker fam. Don't forget to also hit that like button and tap the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube so that you're notified whenever we post new content every single week. If you happen to be listening to this on Apple Podcasts, you can go ahead and leave us a rave five-star review so that we can reach more amazing folks just like you who wanna level up their organization business game. And if you're jonesing for some of that genuine connection, you've got a ton of questions that you need answered, well then you've got to come on over and join my free Facebook group. We've got tons of very supportive members in there. It's a very active community, ready and waiting to help you out. So I'll make sure to leave the links to all that good stuff down in the description of the video and the podcast show notes. The main mission here at I Speak Organized is to give you the best quality tools and resources to level up your business and have a truly successful six or seven figure business that doesn't suck away all of your time. So if you're brand new to all of this and it seems very overwhelming, you don't really know where to start, you have come to the right place. I am your go-to gal for all things pro-organizing business. If you're afraid that you aren't enough, like you don't have enough experience or you don't really have the goods to bring to the table to charge what other people charge or whatever story you happen to be telling yourself, I am here to help you understand that you can be exceptional with the right tools and training. So in just a few minutes, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about how I can help you with that. But in the meantime, let's get into this juicy interview. All right, speaker fam, please join me in welcoming Andrew Seeker. He's from Anchor Capital, and we're going to talk to him all about financial health in our business. Andrew, welcome to the show. Thank you, Melanie. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, happy to have you. So I do want to, before we jump into the meat of the conversation, have you tell us a little bit more about your business and how you and I connected and uh, just give us some details and rundown about what you do for other business owners. Sure. Okay. Um, to answer the first question, uh, Melanie and I, we met at another real estate agent who has her own private little association and group. And so we met there and we got to talking and then we both became members of the BIA, the Builders Industrial Association. And so I met, I uh, saw more of Melanie and met her husband there at one of the breakfast events that they had. And um, as far as myself, uh, Anchor Consulting and Capital, um, I'm basically in business to help other business owners because it's very, very crucial. Um, business these days is very, very complicated. And um, my focus is mainly on cash flow uh, because cash is the life of the business. It's like oxygen for human beings. If you don't have any air to breathe, you're not going to live very long. And cash is that equivalent for a business. So my goal and my mission in life is to help as many business owners as I can to become profitable and to own a cash flowing machine, not some type of job that they're enslaved to. You have mm -hmm. always had 
the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, this, all of this knowledge and all of this background in, in the financial world and helping these small business owners, it really is a passion of yours. And I know it's something that started from a very young age. So I'm just curious how your background, if you want to just tell us a little bit about that uh, from a very young age, what you were doing, how this journey all started for you and how it sort of has shaped your approach to business consulting today and why just tie it all together, why all of this matters so much to you. Okay. Yeah, sure. So basically, yeah, it started when I was about 10, 10 years old. I always loved birds and, you know, I had all kinds of birds, chickens and ducks and geese and pigeons and all of that stuff. And I had 50 laying hens that I bought and I started selling eggs to all the neighbors and it was, you know, I was young and naive back then. I had no business background. I didn't know anything about any of this stuff that I know now, mm -hmm. right? But I just went and sold eggs and just kind of did my thing. And when I look back on it, it's like, you know, when I first started as a kid, I really didn't have any fear of, you know, I didn't think, oh man, I wonder if they're going to buy eggs or not, or I wonder if I'm going to be profitable. You know, I, these <laughs> things never, these things never occurred to me, right? I just kind of went out there and did it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so the, the thing I learned is to have passion for what you're doing. Um, as of course, as I grew older and started expanding, you know, when, before I went to college, I was reading, I read an article in business week and that was saying that all CEOs start off as accountants and you know, the numbers, you're basically a business doctor. Mm -hmm. So then when I went to college, I got a four year degree with an emphasis in accounting. And uh, so I, that's where I learned about all the numbers. And I understand now how the CEOs got to be CEOs. And that is they understand the financial, the metrics of all the 16 drivers and how this all affects businesses. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, because that's that was my goal is to be a CEO, right? And so uh, I wanted to work my way up there. I just wanted to be independent because, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of jobs in my in my past as I was growing up and working my way through college and whatnot. And so I've had a lot of menial jobs and low paying jobs and all this. And I thought, well, you know, with all the knowledge and skills that I've developed, I think I can do better than that. So I, I, you know, keep studying. I'm always learning, always learning, developing and, and improving everything. And I just have a love and passion for business. I just want to help other people because I've struggled like everybody else mm -hmm. listening in on this call. You know, I was also once a startup and I've actually had a couple of businesses that did fail, um, just not so much because of financial, but just because I didn't know what I was doing. I kind of got into some things that I shouldn't have, um, you know, and I just didn't have the time and patience for it. You know, you always learn from mistakes. And I think it's critical. All these business gurus, all these books I'm reading, they're always, they're all saying that, you know, you have to make mistakes in order to grow. Mm -hmm. and it's just inevitable. And right. so... The thing is, you know, we just want to make the mistakes. We want to try to make sure that, it, you know, as we're making a mistake, that we're, we have a tab on it. You know, we have a mental tab on it, on where we're going, what we're doing, and have kind of have that plan B mm -hmm. to get out of it, right? Right. But that's the, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. That's wonderful. Yeah, you're you're the business doctor. You You went to school and you became a business doctor, which is a very... Right. A very cool way of looking at it. Beautiful. I, that's very that's very mm -hmm. well said. And one thing that you uh, promote is something that you call the sixteen drivers of cash flow. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can briefly unpack what that is and how implementing that can directly impact a business's profitability. Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, well. As you mentioned, there are 16 drivers of cash flow. It would take me about 40 minutes to explain everything in detail. So I'm going to just kind of name a couple, just give you a couple of brief examples here. But to start with, there are three main categories. Um, they are revenue, profit, and cash flow. So I consider these the main categories or think of it like a bucket. Okay. And the 16 drivers are... Uh, of course, you know, there's some that will affect revenue, some that will affect profit, some that affect cash flow. Um, but let me give you a couple examples here. Um, so for revenue, one of the drivers of revenue would be your conversion of leads, your lead conversion, right? So obviously, if you have a potential client and you turn them into a pay paying customer, 
I mean, obviously you're going to increase your revenue, right? I mean, that's what we hope, right? So that's one of the drivers. That's one of about five that go into the revenue. Um, profit would be the second uh, bucket or category. And uh, one of the drivers of profit is your cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold will have an effect on how much profit you take in. One of the examples I like to use is uh, a builder or developer, contractor. If they're building a house and um, you know they want to make 30, a $30,000 profit, uh, they start building the house and you know six weeks into it, we have some kind of supply chain issue, right? Like we did during COVID, mm -hmm. the price of lumber shoots up 30, 50% that wipes out your, your profit. So cost of goods sold is also a factor. It's one of the drivers of profitability. The third bucket or third category is cash flow. If you're telling your, giving your clients like 30, 60, 90 days uh, to pay, to pay their bill, uh, to pay you, right? Um, that's actually considered a loan. So now you're becoming a lender and that can affect your, your cash flow as well because now you're saying, okay, you can pay me 30 or 60, 90 days out, but you may need that money like right away. Mm -hmm. So then you might say, well, if you pay up front today, I'll give you 10% off. But see, once again, you know, that's all about cash flow. How badly do you need it? When do you need it? How are you going to need how are you going to use it when you get it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's very well explained. And I, I did want to highlight one point that you made because a lot of the strategies that I teach to my coaching clients in terms of cash flow and getting payments is to encourage people to at least get deposits or full payment up front, mm -hmm. which uh, in our industry right. can be pretty important because it is a service-based industry. And so mm -hmm. we're delivering on our labor, essentially, uh, the results. So that can be a kind of scary thing for a lot of people in our industry to wrap their heads around, but it is important to understand your cash flow and your needs for, especially if you're paying a team um, out of your own pocket and things like that. So it's good that we're having this conversation and highlighting those points. Okay, pop quiz time. How would you feel six months from now if you were sitting in this exact same spot, sipping on your favorite beverage, running your own professional organizing business, and it was booked out with amazing clients that get you excited to get out of bed in the morning? How would that make you feel? But let me guess, there is something holding you back, right? Like that voice of imposter syndrome that whispers, who am I to do this? Well, let me tell you, I have been there and it is not only possible to overcome those fears, it's essential because your future clients need somebody exactly like you. And remember that I am here to help you with proven tools and strategies to get you where you wanna be in this industry if you're willing to follow my lead. My brand new mini course from Overlooked to Overbooked is designed to help you overcome your imposter syndrome, turn your website into a client magnet with SEO strategies that actually work, skyrocket your social media presence without that uncomfortable buy my stuff energy, and confidently network like a pro all while building genuine connections that feel as natural as making friends. It's all self-paced and comes with a workbook full of done-for-you scripts and templates that are proven to generate leads, help you sound confident, and convert all of that into cash in your wallet. And if you want to get paying clients in the door faster, you can also pick up my done-for-you pro organizer forms pack designed specifically for professional organizers with nine custom templates, including a client agreement, payment authorization form, follow-up email scripts, and so much more. You use a free Canva account to add your business info, branding touches, and then you're basically ready to go for your next project. And as a special gift for being an amazing part of my speaker fam, you're going to get $8 off both the overbooked course and my pro organizer forms pack using code YTPRO8 at checkout. All that info will be down in the description and the podcast show notes. Lastly, if you're kind of nervous about taking payments for jobs and you know you need to take cards from clients, then I've got a tool that is going to make your day. Project to Payment is my favorite favorite invoicing and customer management tool that's actually easy to use. With just one tool, you get paid faster, create seamless professional customer experiences, and you get access to estimates, invoices, payments. They've got super fast payout for a healthy cash flow, QuickBooks integration, and to top it all off, you get the best and friendliest US-based customer support to walk you through any hiccups or questions. And there's so many more features that they have coming online every single month. You work hard to organize for your 
clients. So doesn't your business deserve the same? Obviously the answer is yes. And so project to payment is only $20 a month and they have the most competitive and transparent processing fees in the industry. And trust me, I have tried them all. And if that weren't enough, when you go to projecttopayment.com slash I speak organized, you're going to get three months completely free just to try it out. So you're welcome. That's it. No more reinventing the wheel. These resources are plug and play and allow you to access what works while avoiding the pitfalls as much as possible. Remember that investing in yourself is the first step to showing your clients that they should invest in you. So don't let another moment pass you by to become the business owner that your future clients need. You're only one decision away from becoming booked, busy, and well-equipped to crush it in the professional organizing industry. So I want to um, address another point of your business that you can kind of help us start to think about more strategically. And th this is really important for those of us who are solopreneurs or people that are just starting out, which is the majority of my audience listening and watching, they're mm -hmm. going to be in business for themselves for the very first time. And they're going to be doing a lot of it on their own or maybe with one other partner. So obviously at that stage, the operation is heavily reliant on your constant involvement. And so one of the things that I know that you help people with and strategize is to reduce the dependency on yourself for the business to essentially become self-sustaining. So mm -hmm. um, where, what are some of your top strategies for reducing the work that you must put in in order for your business to be self-sustaining? Of course, you know, one of the, probably the number one advice is to get professional help. But I knew, realized though too, you mentioned startups and people that are just new to business and getting into it. They may not have the financial resources to hire a professional. Mm -hmm. Um, so I totally get that, um, for myself, I would personally be willing to help somebody out if they send me, you know, their business plan, I, I would be happy to do a free strategy session with them, uh, to see what we can do to get them going. If I was in their shoes and their position, I would probably join some associations and network with some competitors or people in the same industry and pick their brains, um, and, you know get some advice from them and help from them if possible. Uh, you might be able to partner up with somebody and maybe do some, you know, uh, what do you call it? Some bartering, exchange, barter, whatever. You know, another uh, route to go would be like virtual assistant. Um, you can hire them in the Philippines or out of India. And a lot of them are actually quite good. They don't have too much of an accent and they're like $4 an hour. I've seen them as low well as $4 an hour. Mm -hmm. And you know, with a service business like yourself and like I do, um, you know, you can always try to get an affiliate, um, pay them a commission, you know, pay for performance. Uh, and then if the, the, the key thing though, is to get the right person to do the function that you want or that, that task that you want to delegate, you want to make sure that you compensate them well, of mm -hmm. course, but also in a manner that doesn't negatively affect your cash flow. Right. So that's what, those are some of the strategies that I would recommend. I'm also a very avid book reader. So I read lots and lots of books. Just, you know, I've already read 30 books this year. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them on business and stuff. Yeah. And it's all just a matter of time. You know, none of the stuff that we're talking about today is, is necessarily terribly complicated. Uh, right. Just the individual, like the individual steps. But putting it all together and putting in the consistency and having a strategy behind it, that's the tricky part where eventually mm -hmm. those people that have been in business for a while can really benefit from a professional hand in developing some of these things, which kind of leads me into my next question. So there mm -hmm. will also be people here that have been in business for a while and they're in growth mode. Maybe they've got a few employees in their, in their team now. Um, and they're ready to kind of take these strategies, supercharge them and get a little bit more detailed. But there's a catch 22 that you've pointed out, um, which basically is the fact that we need cash to grow our business for more cash, but you, you have to have cash in order to be able to grow. So how right. do you get out of that cycle? How do you break that cycle for those people that find themselves in that battle? Yeah, that's a very good question. So for 
People that are struggling with cash, right? One of the first things people say is to try to borrow money. If you need cash, borrow from friends or family, somebody that you can trust, that trusts you. Um, another way to go would be to possibly get a loan from the bank. Now that's also tricky because banks are really tightening the hatch on, on their lending programs, including SBA. Okay. And I've been told from several clients that uh, even SBA loans now are pretty steep. You know, they're like seven, eight, nine percent interest on they these are. loans. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but one of the things, this is another reason why I try to promote trying to find a professional coach, you know, business coach, because I don't want to necessarily recommend that you go out and get a loan. You may not need a loan. You know, it might be a marketing thing. You might need to just do post more on Facebook or something and and try to generate some leads that way. Or like I mentioned earlier, join an association and network with people, mm -hmm. um, you know, or, you, you know, like BNI as well, right? You get rep referrals and things like that. You can meet other professionals that can help you build your team, offer them, you know, some compensation based on their performance, what they're doing. Right. Um, if anybody on this that's listening to this needs some help with credit, I do uh, I do have contacts with credit solution uh, repair solutions that are very affordable uh, and very, very quick and accurate. The best thing to do is just hit me up and, you know, let me know where you're at. Gotcha. Yeah, I know you also have a background as a CFO in, in doing like financial mm -hmm. uh, officer work. Yeah, that this if this is really important stuff. It's the stuff that we like to gloss over it. It mm -hmm. kind of makes our heads swirl in circles, but it is really important to understand, you know, what money is available to you, how to work the system in a smart way, um, what's right. going to allow you to grow and just learn how to take calculated risks. Right. Uh, I think we're all so risk adverse, but if you have somebody like Andrew in your back pocket that can help you understand those risks and make sure that you're taking um, high quality calculated risks that will have a return and be able to allow you to grow, then mm -hmm. that's that's going to be the way that you are going to run a successful, sustainable business that uh, will will be around for a long time. So mm -hmm. the the other thing I know that you kind of help with, it, it's not just all about cash flow. There's also a lot of business analysis that goes into this, like just the overall health of your business. Finances, the the money part is obviously like a prime indicator of the health of your business, but there's various other factors. And you did touch on that. You know, maybe it's not the fact that you need more cash. Maybe it's a marketing problem. So what are some simple tools or methods that you recommend to business owners to kind of help them determine what's working and what isn't working in their operations? Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I have a tool for that that can help business owners find out where the financial cancer is and we can fix it, cure it. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is though, without knowing what I'm looking at, I don't know how it can help you, right? I, I can't say, well, you know, your cost of goods sold are too high or you're paying too much in payroll expenses, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, that's kind of a, a, you know, a simple tool. I don't know. I mean, I've got the tool. It, it is actually quite simple. Um, but you know, my, my team and I, we, we are professionals that help people do that. And, you know, I'd be happy to do a free analysis. Gotcha. So I assume that that would sort of be the first step for people feeling stuck right. in their business growth. Are there any other initial steps that they could take to start seeing some change towards profitability? Um, well, of course, the first step is to acknowledge that you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't think for most business owners that are realistic, I don't think that's a problem, right? Everybody knows that they're stuck. They need help. Um, so the, I guess my advice would be to get a professional business coach to help you create a plan, look at your business, say, okay, this is where I'm stuck. This is where I need help. And then have that all together before you present it to your business coach, mm -hmm. right? Or your coach, your, your advisor. That way you kind of have uh, an idea of where your problems are at. The business coach can help you in order to generate the cash you need to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, this is like 
you know, I can't do a diagnosis until I see what's, you know, where the problems are at until I see the financial, pro the financial statements or the business plan. Right. Which kind of leads me to my next point and question, because obviously, as you know, and I know running a business is, can be very stressful. You know, you're wearing a lot of different hats in mm -hmm. your business. And so um, I'm curious if you have any thoughts on whether hiring a virtual assistant is best or looking into automated options, softwares, different things, any recommendations about how you can effectively manage your roles without getting overwhelmed and losing focus on what's crucial? Because I, I really think I want to um, just flesh out that question a little bit, because I feel like people focus on the wrong drivers when it comes to mm -hmm. making money in their business. Right. So how do we manage all of that? How do we first figure out, you know, what needs to be delegated or automated and then uh, what we should be focusing on? And what do you recommend people focus on most in order to develop a little bit uh, of a better, healthier cash flow? I do have a source. I'm actually an affiliate of a company in, in Lake Oswego that does that. Mm -hmm. And they'll do it nationwide for basically any industry. They can help you save money on your credit card transactions. You don't, they have it so you don't pay the fee, that 3% fee. Um, and they have, help you automate everything so that you don't have to, um, you know, hire, a, you know, you don't have to hire a full-time bookkeeper or CPA to keep track of all that. They automate everything for you, all your pay, accounts payable, accounts receivable all of this stuff and there's no cost to get set up either. Oh, wow. But again, this is, we have to be, I have to be extremely careful how I present this to, you know, our listen, our listeners, mm -hmm. because, you know, this is not going to be something for startups um, because obviously you don't have anything to report. You know, you don't have, if you haven't generated any sales yet, mm -hmm. it might be it not, it might not be cost effective for you to jump into something like this, this soon. There's, Programs like Mango and uh, Zero that's spelled with an X, X-E-R-O. Mm -hmm. There's QuickBooks, um, which a lot of accountants I hear don't like mm -hmm. as of lately. But there are some other sources, resources out there that can uh, do this kind of material or things for you um, for, you know, a reasonable fee or low cost. And I think it would be, it would be very beneficial to business owners, regardless of what level you're at because it gives you peace of mind and it helps you sleep better at night. You don't have to sit there and crunch numbers all day. You can work on your trade. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's a great place to start. Um, I, I want to pivot to a, a talking about profit specifically. So, and this is more from an accounting perspective, which I know makes some people's eyes cross, but this is really important to kind of understand because there, there is the traditional profit formula, but I know a lot of accountants actually prefer to look at it differently. There's often a lot of misconceptions about mm -hmm. how to create profit in your business. So can you elaborate on what a real winning profit formula is for your business's financial success? Sure. I can answer that one. So the way we see it is a lot of business owners, they, they think that sales is more important than profit. And profit is more important than cash, but that's, that's the misnomer. That's the, that's the mistake that a lot of business owners make. It's very, very simple. Cash is king. And as I mentioned earlier, cash flow is critical. That's the number one thing. That's the only thing as a business owner that, that a business owner needs to be concerned about is cash flow. And that's what we're all in business for really. I mean, sure. We have fun. A baker has fun, probably baking cookies and pies and cinnamon rolls. I mean, that's fun, mm -hmm. but realistically we're in business to make money and that's, you know, and that's where it's all, what it's all about. We want to be able to get to the point where, um, you know, we can take a six month vacation and not have to sweat blood about how our business is going to survive while we're gone. Mm -hmm. Right. We want to automate everything. We want to get it to the point where we can just walk away from it and not have to break a sweat or lose a night of sleep. So a lot of business owners are looking at, they might be looking at the numbers, but they're looking at the wrong numbers. And that's what this, uh, that's what the 16 drivers of cash flow will basically help business owners with. And 
since I'm on the topic, I do have a free gift for our listeners. It is an 18 page, uh, I don't know, white paper, ebook. I don't know what you want to call it, but mm-hmm. it explains, it, it lists all the 16 drivers and it explains where, which bucket it falls into. And it gives an example of how, how this particular, you know, driver affects this particular category, because we did have a client that, um, uh, that bought a business and the, the business broker told him that this business was generating $10,000 a month in cash or cash or profit, so right. to speak. Right. And so this owner just kind of took it, took everything for granted, lost track of everything and started spending $10,000 on a new car and supporting his family and whatnot. Six months later, he's calling the broker and he's like, Hey man, I'm in trouble. You mm-hmm. said this thing generates $10,000 a month, but he wasn't keeping track of his numbers. And what happens is that as his sales increased, so did his cost of goods sold. Mm-hmm. And so that ate into his profit. So then it just kind of collapsed on him. And he ended up, you know, taking a, you know, taking um, a cut in salary. He had to obviously stop spending that. And then he had to work with his vendors uh, to, you know, set up a payment plan where he could, you know, get the 30, 60, 90 day payment plans to pay it off. You just never know how you can get that runaway train started. And it's good to have uh, a resource in your back pocket to rely on for sure. Mm -hmm. So now I want to kind of flip it to looking at the future, future vision, just to kind of wrap up here. So I obviously, you know, you're a learned guy, you read a lot of books, you're investing your time. And also, by the way, I wanted to point out that another shortcut, obviously we all have to make mistakes, but a shortcut is to learn from other people's mistakes, right? So right. That you don't have to make them yourself. Just a right. little side note. But looking looking ahead, um, are you seeing any emerging trends or innovations that are kind of that we should have on our radar in terms of having an understanding of our business operations and capital management and all of that? Sure. Um yeah, that's a that's a good question. It's very loaded. I'm trying to think now where to start. <laughs> okay, yeah. so yes, I I am seeing I kind of feel I I hope I'm not politically incorrect or whatever, but I think it appears to me like that our government, at least the US government is trying to kill small businesses. They seem to make it really difficult for all of us who are, you know, or uh, the small business owner to try to generate anything. So um, you know, we have inflationary issues. And so this is where, you know, once again, a financial, you know, a, a business coach can help you navigate, you know, the, your cost of goods sold and marketing and whatnot. But I would, I would say, yes, um, you know, we have to look at the legal issues. Another thing that's really big these days is uh, generative AI. So your artificial intelligence starting to get uh, kind of move over to uh, Microsoft's Copilot, mm-hmm. which is also another uh, kind of like a chat GPT, take advantage of these uh, programs and software uh, that's out there. It can help you write sales letters or create posts for LinkedIn or social media. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it can give you ideas on what to do. Like for one thing, um, you know, I was always looking for associations to join. So I just, you know, plugged in to chat GPT. Can you give me like top 10 or top 20 associations in my area that specialize in, you know, construction, right. construction industry or whatever. And so then it just spits it all out. And it's right there. It just takes a couple seconds to do that. Mm-hmm. So you can get, you can get all kinds of good ideas on that. So anyway, moving away from uh, general, the generative AI, um, another thing we have to be very cognizant too is of uh, inflation. Mm-hmm. as I hinted on earlier. So inflation, I think, is still going to go up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what Jerome Powell is saying. They're just kind of talking through the side of their mouth, right? And they're kind of saying this, but they mean something else. And it's uh, it's a bunch of gobbledygook. I don't really know what's going to happen. But uh, for me personally, I'm going to just uh, prepare for the worst. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm already expecting inflation to go up. I don't think we're ever going to see the price of gas going down. Mm-hmm. The only way a price of food and all your staples, I think it's just going to go up. So how do we manage that? 
So that's something that we have to kind of be cognizant of and start thinking and planning ahead on. Right. And um, you mentioned, I think you mentioned capital management. Mm -hmm. um, one way to, to work with that is there are a lot of private money lenders out there now uh, since the banks are all getting all tight with their lending requirements, private money is still available. And another uh, platform, if you have a really good product, is to use the crowdfunding platforms. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously, you know, you, if you can stay with a small amount, you know, that's great. If you're only looking to raise, say, $100,000, you should be able to get that really quickly. One tip that I learned from a book that I read a couple, three years ago is to always chip in about 20% of what you're trying to raise yourself. Mm -hmm. Have that already shown. So that gives you momentum. And then, you know, you want to try to get that word out right away as soon as you create your, your crowdfunding platform uh, request. Uh, fund it, put in about 10 to 20%, and then let everybody know right away. Try to get that momentum going right off the bat. Mark, I love it. Those are some really great strategies. I want to wrap up first to thank you for coming on the show, but also make sure that people who are listening and watching today that know that they need a little bit of help. Maybe they want to reach out to you for a bit of a financial analysis. Maybe they're ready to jump in for something more. How do we find you? What is your website, social media? How do we get in touch with you? Okay. Yeah. The, the, um, I was wondering if you could do a screen share. Sure. I have a contact slide I can put up here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So that's how you can contact me. Uh, my mobile number is up there and my email and website. Uh, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, I prefer email uh, the best. That's probably the best way. Awesome. Andrew, thank you so much for coming on the show. You really are so generous with everything that you share. Um, and I've encountered you in, in many different uh, places over the last few months. And it's been really great connecting with you and sharing all of this information. So thanks again for coming on the show. Well, thank you as much as well, Melanie. I really appreciate you inviting me on here. And, and yeah, I just really appreciate all your professional questions there too. Those were really good. All right, fam, as always, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us on the Speak Organized podcast. It's always an honor to have you around. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Reach out to me or Andrew if you need additional help. Always happy to answer any questions. Make sure that you check out all the goodies down in the description and the podcast show notes. You can check out my course. Remember, you have that discount link available for you. If you need that one-on-one -on -one support, please go ahead and book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call before my slots are full for the month. I would love to sit and strategize with you. And you can check out all the other resources we have available. Be sure to join that free Facebook group if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's all the different things that we have for you today. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.